Happy patch day, everyone. So usually we'd call 10.1.5 a minor content patch, but honestly, this one's kind of major. They're even treating it with its own name and trailer and all of that. Uh, such a massive 0.5 patch is actually kind of a new thing to WoW. So I figured today we'd do a video to make it real easy for you. You're going to learn every bit of content you can do, starting when the servers come up and all the rewards that you can get for your time. A mini raid, a grind fest that's actually much more fun than usual, maybe more fun than Zarlacc Cavern, a whole ton of side quests, and of course, more. The big ticket item first, the mini raid. Okay, it's actually a mega dungeon, but coming complete with an immortal achievement, decent item level rewards, and pretty aggressive tuning, this is something that we can sort of describe as WoW's first five-man raid, which is pretty dope. Dawn of the Infinite is an eight-boss dungeon that fits more into the story of the expansion than dungeons usually do, so it really does feel like this patch is kind of like a small, major patch. It's got some crazy good rewards too. It drops staggeringly strong gear at item level 437 that can be upgraded up to 441. Then some of the trinkets are special and the gear looks terrific. And for the collectors, the last boss drops these quantum items. Everyone gets a random quantum item on kill. And when you use them, they roll into totally random appearances of whatever armor type. So you basically can casino your way once a week into getting transmog in a slot that you don't have before because they don't roll dupes. There's also the quantum courser item. This is a very rare drop from the boss and it gives you a random mount that you don't already have. Who knows, it could be invincible. Then the second to last boss drops something we've been waiting for for a long time, and that is a HD Gore Howl model. And the other standout item is an infinite version of the Silver Hand. This will look amazing for Red Paladins and a big rip to Holy Paladins who can't use it because they use shields. Finally, there are two achievements with this. Completing it on Mythic before 10.2 arrives will award the Of the Infinite title, and completing it without any deaths in your party will give you this Infinite Regalia, which looks awesome. Good luck with that one. And if you need a hand, well, our good buddy and colleague Laced actually has a full guide to this dungeon over in his channel. Once the dungeon's clear, there's a bunch of story and quests to do, and the good news is, I don't know what they are. None of this was on the PTR. It's all encrypted, right? So that does mean you can expect some lore analysis content from us soon. Let's move on to the next feature then. Time Rifts are a new feature. They basically have you doing a bunch of solo and group tasks for Nosdormu's consort, Sorodormi. Then you hop into an alternative timeline and you kill a big boss and you get rewards. Now these happen every hour at the Tearhold Reservoir and every hour it will rotate to a different timeline. You get, of course, boxes of loot for finishing them and the quality of that box will depend on how much progress has been made. It's a little bit like with the Ascara Feast. There's also a new currency, Paracausal Flakes. You get these from uh, participating, right? And these can be traded in for a whole ton of sweet new transmog and some really sick catch-up trinkets. As an example, one of them is a fragment of Frostmourne and it turns you into a lich. Another is a fragment of the Doomhammer and that gives you a crazy melee combo. Or if you're a healer, you can get Sessionel. Um, it's basically, it makes a little seedling and the seedling pulses healing while you keep it alive, which is a neat way to do it. These are genuinely fun little grind fests, a mix between the Rathian reputation from the start of this expansion and the community feasts with an absolute ton of rewards. It shouldn't take you too long though. You get a weekly quest to complete one of them and that gives you a thousand paracausal flakes and that's just about enough for a transmog weapon of your choice. On PTR, we were actually getting about 300 to 400 flakes per rift, though it might actually be a bit more when you do it on live because there'll be more people, meaning the bar will be more full. So that basically means do two rifts and you'll get a trinket of your choice. Uh, though those trinkets can drop from the end bosses. We actually saw the Shamalane trinket drop from Varian, which is pretty nice. Now, for rewards, when I say there's a ton, I really do mean it. There's a vendor for each of the seven timelines. Most of them have a mount, a pet, a tabard, a trinket, a transmog, and toys. So if you're a collector, then these time rifts will keep you going for quite some time indeed. Now, of course, you get random rewards from doing each rift, so you don't need enough flicks for absolutely everything, and you also randomly get these items called Encapsulated Destiny quite the name. And these are cool because if you use one of them, it will guarantee you actually get some loot from the rift that you're doing. And another really nice thing is that at least according to the patch notes, you do not get dupes. 
which is so good. Their, uh, look, their reward team is leveling up. I definitely like that. There's also some catch-up gear that can drop and an item that you can trade in for a piece of your choice, a little bit like in the Forbidden Reach. Last I checked, the catch-up gear is eye level 402 and of course is something that fits into the upgrade system. And I'm not done yet because there's another rep with Sora Dormi. Basically, the more time rift stuff you do, the friendlier you'll be with her. And that comes with its own quest and uh, a bunch of rewards. This is definitely one you'll be kind of grinding up over time. And this is actually to the point where we don't know what all the rewards are just yet. Now, these are full of flavorful what if lore moments and some kind of cool fan service. As a start, we learn that Alex Straza is proficient, sort of, in speaking Nurglish, the Murloc language, and we finally get to see Varian again, but something is not quite right. There's a new quest hub coming as well. So remember this weird place where time just kind of went wrong for no reason? Well, now we actually have a reason and we can do something about it. Daily quests show up here, sending us on adventures to sort out very strange timeline anomalies. Things like making sure that uh, Illidan and Taronda don't end up hooking up. Because if they did, that would lead to the Legion winning. Or rescuing Anduin's grandfather from Knowles as a kid. And a few serious ones, like helping Alex Straza escape Grim Patol and seeing some things that actually were only in books and comics actually happen in-game, which I love to see. Stuff with Valera, Brawl, and Varian in the Gladiator's Ring, and making sure that the tragic story behind the Mount Invincible actually happens. And if you're a Rexar fan, well, you'll be eating good with this one too. If you also want existing content to feel fresh, definitely give Augmentation Evoker a go. It is pretty damn cool. It's WoW's first support spec. It's a DPS with a simple core rotation and a focus on buffing your allies. They do small damage themselves, but they make their allies do way more damage. Now, the likes of Recount and Details, your damage meters in-game, they won't really show that, but the good news is that the combat logs do, so... Hopefully the likes of Warcraft logs will be able to handle these guys correctly. So the way it works is your main buff, Ebon Might, gives four allies a whole bunch of main stat. You can give a target player 3% crit, you can give the tank explosive armor, you can let healers cast while they're moving in a massive range, and a whole bunch more too. We've actually got a full video on it as well. And the good news is that if this goes well, other support specs are on the cards. So if you've wanted a bard, we're getting closer. And finally, for the class content, mages have actually seen a bit of a revamp that's really nice, actually. It solves so many of their problems. Holy Paladins are also looking to be eating a decent bit better in terms of design. And if you want more details, I will link our class videos for this patch down below. Next, then, let's move to a surprising feature. This feature is still being investigated, but data mining and patch notes do combine to paint an awesome picture. Nax Ramus is going to get the Zulgarub treatment, with legacy patterns from the removed Frost Resist Nax gear being available for crafters to make bank, and also some classic transmogs. Uh, now, while they're not going to be easy, seemingly that includes the long-removed Tier 3. Maybe. Now, the patch notes tell you where to start. Frozen runes are returning to the walls of Naxxramas, and these can be used in all of the ancient recipes that you can get from this guy, who is an Argent Dawn vendor. Now, we don't know how to get our hands on the tokens that are needed yet, but I imagine that will become obvious once everything is unencrypted in-game. Now, there's a ton of materials and items in the game that, uh, you know... That we know they're in the game, we just don't know where to find them. So whenever this like comes out in a few days pass, we'll kind of understand then. But here's a tip. If you want to make these or get these or even just make a ton of cash, definitely start farming righteous orbs from bosses in Stratholm and get your alts ready for pretty quick runs through Naxxramas to get those frozen runes. Any Arcanite, Thorium, or Enchanted Thorium, or basically any Wrath Airy materials are also about to become more valuable as well. And while you're in Nax getting all this stuff done, either trying to get the materials yourself or to make some money, uh, here is a quick PSA. Back in the day, looting the runes would actually save you, right? It would save your instance and that would stop you from farming them. But that's actually not the case right now. If you do not kill any bosses, you can just leave the instance, reset, and then head right back in again to get even more orbs. That said... If you do kill those, those bosses, remember, killing old raid bosses works for the trading post objective. So if you clear Nax Ramus, that gets you 14 out of your 25 kills, which will get you a bit closer to this month's reward, which is the Dragon Riding Netherwing. 
But that's not all. Blizzard have done a simple version of this for the Wailing Caverns. So the removed deviate scale patterns have actually been added to the stuffed bags that drop from the Druids of the Fang, which is sweet. Over then in Dire Maul, Nott, who is the goblin that gives you the Ogre Suit quest, he will actually teach leather workers with 275 or more classic skill how to make the Ogre Suit once they've done the quest. And then, in Aeon's Fringe, the quests have been added um, that, uh, you know, can get you things like the classic blacksmithing recipes for the true silver champion, remember that, uh, and more. Of course, we'll do a full video on this once all the data's out, but our props, uh, of course, to Modi for uh, leading the hunt on this stuff on the PTR. The next feature then is Welp Daycare. Basically, it's just a bunch of cute little quests that last for a few different weeks, and uh, once that's through, you will get a Welpling of each of the different dragon flights. You know, you're basically helping nurture them and, you know, helping them grow. It's a nice little bit of content. And the way that you get this is that if you're on the Dragon Isles, then a whelp will fly over to you and you can pick the quest up. So it's a nice little thing to do in between your time rifts. Now for something a bit less nice. Warlocks. Okay, Warlocks, you get a new quest. As always, you always get the good stuff. But anyway, you'll get a mail that promises you power. And it starts a really cool little side quest full of flavor about the new Warlock races. It's a fun quest, but doing it also unlocks the new imp customizations. And on that note, Warlocks, uh, go to the barbershop. Because now you can change each of your demons. And there's a whole bunch of new customizations and content to unlock those customizations that is scattered across like both old and new stuff. It's really cool. Right, that's everything. There's new content, but there's a bunch of other things that you should definitely know about. So let's do a quick fire round. With the patch launch, you can get two free mounts. The riding skill has been removed from trainers. It's now learned automatically by characters once they hit the right level. And along with this, they've added a new mount and quest to basically make WoW work a bit better for newer players. What this means for you, though, is that if you've got a level 30 or above character, either Alliance or Horde, just go to Boralus and uh, pick up the new Harbor Griffin. Or if you're Horde, go to Zuldazar and pick up the Scarlet Pterodax. This also means that any alts that you haven't purchased riding skill on will just get it for free when you log in, saving you literally like maybe tens of thousands of gold. Next then, you've always been able to just go get transmog, right? But it's always been a case of, you know, having to search for the source and a third party site or a video and alt tabbing to your second monitor or whatever for reference. Now though, it's totally trackable inside the game because transmog tracking is a thing. So anything that comes from a vendor, a dungeon, or a raid can be shift clicked on and tracked, just like how you would track a quest objective. Basically then, it just means you have a handy little to-do list of all the appearances that you want to go and get sitting there on your UI. Next, an awesome new feature. So, you know the garrison hearthstone you got from Wad and the Dalaran hearthstone that you got from Legion? The good news now is that these are no longer items in your bag. Instead, they are toys. And because of that, it means you can still use them. They still work the exact same way. Just you drag them onto your bars like a spell and you don't put them in your bags. And this is great because it's just two bag slots saved, which uh, I don't know about you, but my bag space is always at a premium. So this is definitely a nice one. Next, a PSA. The Onyx Annulet and the Seal of Diurna's Chosen have both been nerfed very heavily, so definitely make sure that you get your character some Season 2 rings to replace those as soon as is possible, because they're basically no longer relevant. Next then, if you're in the mood to toy around on an alt, it's allied race time because the unlock requirements have been removed. All you need is one level 40 character on your account and you can just go and do the scenarios to uh, unlock them and, and that's that. No grinding reps or any of those things. And also in the leveling category, there are new welcome back gifts. Any characters left untouched for 60 or more days can basically get a set of new bags, fresh level appropriate gear, and the option to just clear out your whole quest log if you want. So basically it means that your character, you hit a button and you can just get going. Next then, if you're interested in Garrosh's iconic shoulders, the tusks of Manoroth, maybe you want those to go with your new HD gore howl that maybe you luckily got from the new Mega Dungeon. Well, the good news is, you know, you'll still need to be lucky, but you can farm them a hell of a lot quicker because Blizzard have added a shortcut to the raid. You basically just use the scroll beside Lorewalker Cho and it will take you to the final bit of Siege of Orgrimmar, which, I mean, this, this will save people dozens of hours probably. Next then, Oh, this is a new thing. It's a new game. Check out your character's eyes. Because the little white dot to represent glare, you know, adding that bit of depth and reflectivity to non-glowing eyes, has been updated. 
On the PTR, it now moves to mimic light shining off your eye at different angles instead of just being fixed in the upper left corner like it had been on live. It's a small change, but hey, it means somebody is going and fiddling around with the customizations to make things look just that bit better. So, there you have it. Uh, that is, uh, that's what's going on. This is a way bigger patch than we were anticipating, right? I mean, a, a dungeon that feels a bit like a mini raid, a whole bunch of encrypted quests and cutscenes and lore stuff, and all the other features. It's honestly pretty damn sick. And uh, I gotta say, with Zarelek Cavern, I think one of the problems with Zarelek is it was very stop-start, right? You know, like the way the rares spawn, just the way it worked, it was so stop-start, and I just think people didn't mesh with it. Forbidden Reach certainly did not push the boat out, but the way that its rares spawned and the health that they had meant there was always just a big flock of players going around in a big circle, kind of always grinding, always progressing, a bit like if you were doing the Cobalt Assembly or that Rathian rep. We're almost there again with these time rates, because they're actually quite fun. You just, look, you, you brain off, you grind some boys, you go into a cool-looking place and uh, kill some guy from a, you know, alternate timeline. The only downside is these last for like 20 minutes and they spawn every hour. Blizzard, if you were to have these maybe last for 20 minutes and then spawn every 30 minutes, and then maybe in that like 10 minute in between people could just grind stuff, I think in the same way that people would grind the Timeless Isle or grind Gulp Frogs, you could totally get people just zoning out for like two hours of time rifts. Whereas right now, you do them, they're fun, but after 20 minutes, that's it. There's no more to do. Just a thought, but I think we're on the right track with this one. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the patch, and of course, the patch 10.1.7 uh, patch will, uh, will be in the PTR within the next week or two because this train has no brakes. All right, that's it for me. Have a wonderful day, enjoy the patch, and I'll see you next time.